me for more and more, so I'm a bad boy When I got off my, I got to the cash and got in my bag, boy Please don't think it's sweet, I stay with the heat even though I'm a sad boy You better watch the way you breathe around me for that breath be your last boy Damn, it's been a while since I've used the intro. Sorry about that, guys. Clearly, I've been gone for a little bit longer than I would have liked to, but things happen, and I really am happy you guys supported me so much when I told you that I had to take a few days off, because, like, after that underway, my entire schedule has changed. For the past two weeks, I have been waking up at around 3 o'clock and ending my days at 18 for work. I don't even get off the ship until 18. That's how horrible my schedule is now. It's a thing we all have to go through as part of like a service thing. Like everyone in your workspace has to do it at some point. So I had no choice. And uh, I'll go back to my normal schedule eventually when I go back to the, mo uh, the normal people that I work with. But until then, for about three months, I'm going to be stuck on this schedule consistently with about two days off. Hopefully. Things happen, and if you're wondering why I'm taking up so much time, it's because I'm also working in the galley, a.k.a. the cafeteria, a.k.a. the kitchen. It's a bitch and a half, and it sucks so much, but I have to do my duty. Then I go back to my actual, you know, rate, the thing that I actually signed up for. Regardless, thank y'all so much, and I know this isn't what you wanted, but I'm not done with the next part of the Isagi What If?, and I'm still working on the Mahoraga one because I'm still trying to find Izuku's motivation in that story. So instead, I give you guys another JJK video, which people don't usually make a lot of what it's about. But I got y'all. And I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. Uh, uh, what's going on? As he looks about with a confused look, Dim lights blind Yuji when he then hears, So, which one of you is there right now? Which one? Fushigura. Senpai! As he pulls himself forward, Yuji finds that he is restrained by seals. Now he's finally awake and looks around freaking out a bit as Gojo says that he can't break out. Sorry to say this, but you, Itadori Yuji, will be secretly executed. As Yuji is left confused, we have a flashback seeing Yuji signing off on something. His heart had sunk. His voice felt frozen. He felt almost empty. Are you sure you're okay? It's just... I hope he didn't die thinking that he wasn't appreciated. Grandpa was the best, but no one came to see him. Except me. Well, I think you being here was enough for him. Even if he doesn't show it. Heh, <laughs> thanks. Itadori Yuji. As he looks to his left, down a hall, Yuji would see a guy who seems to be about the same age as him, and he asks that they talk. Though grieving, he listens and follows him to the lobby. Curse. That finger was a curse? Part of one. I don't care if you don't. No, I believe you. I just didn't think anyone else like me was around Japan because I never really saw any. But I guess someone has to destroy more curses discreetly, huh? Then that makes this much easier, says Fushiguro. You must not be aware of what curse... You don't know what that finger can really do, do you? Do you have it? N no. My senpai took the rest. I thought it'd be fine. It is, right? As he stumbles back, Megumi thinks, Come to think of it, why can't I sense any of the energy from Suk? Is it because of his technique? Maybe he kept its effect at bay with... What is it, man? Seriously, I put them in danger or what? Unfortunately, yes. They're gonna die. Ringing through his body like the screech of a banshee, Yuji feels this omen of death and gulps as he quickly dashes off, saying that this should hurry, um, hurry up. Megumi follows as Yuji will then take a shortcut to the school. Before we attack, sorcerers don't usually divulge their powers, but in your case, it's necessary because I literally just met you, Shots for Shiguro. Um, even I don't understand it sometimes, but you know how you save files on a computer and stuff? That's what I can do in real life. I save, copy, archive, and etc., Things I touch become files, folders, and my brain acts as the CPU. The only reason I even understand how it works is because I saved my own body info. That's how I even learned what cursed energy was and how I grew mine. Things that are too big can't be saved, though. Alright, simple enough. 
Take a left here. They take a corner into a little highway up a hill before then reaching the high school and instantly leap past the gates when Megumi then runs for the stairs only to be grabbed by the arm as Yuji then leaps much to his surprise and lands on a roof. I see them. Through a window, they see the two and run bashing through the window and land. Yuji runs and touches the curse. The curse is then warped away, dropping the two before it turns to a folder, floating in the air, up and down in a looping sequence. Megumi watches on, weirded out. Well, that all goes into your brain? No, kind of. I really don't want to know that thing's anatomy, okay? I usually just keep them suspended until I get ready and kill them while they're returning to their physical forms. Like this. The folder would shatter, and while it drops the curse, Yuji envelops his body with cursed energy and turns it to paste with the might of his blow, and thus exercising it. Megumi walks past him, grabbing the finger that was dropped, and now he finally feels a cursed energy, and realizes that Yuji must have unknowingly sealed its presence due to the property of his own cursed energy wavelength. That's insane. And he trained himself all this time. Both then freeze before Megumi runs and jumps back through another window while Yuji slides and grabs his friends as another curse would crash in from above where they stood. It would then leap for Megumi, who has to reinforce his fall with cursed energy. The curse then runs his way, fiending for a taste of the finger, when suddenly, atop its head, Yuji drop kicks it, and it is swatted at. <clears throat> the curse runs his way, fiending for a taste of the finger, when suddenly, atop its head, Yuji drop kicks it. And he is then swatted at, jumping off and landing beside Megumi, who summons his two dogs. But he knows that they can't really do much, and the two just keep avoiding the curse. Can't you save it? No, it's too big. Too much to contain. Wait, you said this finger has a lot of cursed energy, right? As he asks this, Yuji jumps, and he's then swatted by a hand. Megumi's dogs are then blown away, as is he. He tumbles until he stops, looking and seeing Yuji hang on by the hand of the curse and he's then thrown to the sky he then checks his pockets and he finds nothing yuji had taken the finger and diverted the attention to him that's why the curse even went after him to begin with it smelled its scent he must have saved it no 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 don't do that we can find another way however slowly yuji would take out and ingest the finger as if a simple snack though he finds it disgusting megumi is left horrified as when yuji falls he looks lifeless and he realizes that he's dead while the curse is just trying to eat him to then obtain the power that he must have contained. Just then, however, Yuji's eyes open as he swings, severing the curse to pieces as he uses these invisible cuts, exercising it as he lands. Th there's a one in a million chance, but it's very slim. It can't be. <laughs> yeah. I knew it. Flesh feels way better this way. Tearing off Yuji's hoodie and shirt, Sukuna basks in the moonlight as he walks and jumps onto a rail, overlooking the neighborhood. <sighs> yes, this is it. The women, the children, multiplying like maggots. It'll be a messy- Ugh. Being grabbed by his own hand, Sukuna limps off the rail, asking, How the hell are you doing this? The hell do you mean? It's my body. Give it back. The sound of a lock echoes as the malevolent shrine of Sukuna is encased in a black box. He stands atop his shrine, confused but interested. Slowly as he regains control, however, Yuji turns and finds that Megumi is chanting for a summoning. Itadori Yuji, under the regulations of Jujutsu, I will have to exercise you as a curse. Hey, 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 whoa, 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 it's still me. I, I took back control. Megumi can't trust this at all because his life is on the line and he's computing it all when suddenly he hears a familiar voice. Oh, uh, Fushiguro. Both Yuji and Megumi then see Gojo Satoru who says, Damn, you're kinda banged up. <laughs> Let me take a few pics. Flashing him with his phone, he takes many angles while an angry Megumi asks him to stop and eventually does. He gets serious asking, So, where's the finger? Uh, I ate it. For real? For real. Hmm. As he approaches Yuji, Gojo inspects his body with his six eyes until he bursts into a chuckle. <laughs> Damn, you really did eat it. It's already combined with 
But you, you are a specimen, huh? Uh, what's your Itadori? Itadori Yuji. How's your body feel? Pretty good. As normal as it can. Gojin then asks if he can switch with the curse and regain control so they can actually test this ability for him to be a vessel. He begins to stretch, handing his back to Megumi, and Yuji says, I don't really think that's safe, right? He looks to Megumi for some assurance, but Gojo says, it's okay, I'm the strongest. Are these souvenirs? asks Megumi. As he turns to him, Gojo says it's more than that, when he's then warned to look back, and we find a rising Yuji cackling as he strikes, cutting us to the next scene, where Gojo sits before the sealed Yuji. And that's it. Why are you so caliv- What is going on, damn it? Sorry, kid, but you do have a suspended execution, though. Why? I mean, I'm happy, I'm alive, but now I'm more scared. Gojo then explains the whole situation with the fingers and how they can't be destroyed, and he gives Yuji a choice. Die now, or die when he has eaten all the fingers. Then, you know, everything is solved. But seriously though, you are really a particular case. Cause I'm still alive? Well that too, but Sukuna was known as the king of poisons as well as curses, but your technique kinda just, it intrigues me a bit. I mean, have you ever tried copying yourself? To copy, I need to fully understand everything. It's easy to replicate objects cause, well you know what they are, but understanding yourself is completely different. I'm still figuring that out. Hmm. Well, choose your hell, kid. Soon, Yuji is released and goes to say goodbye to Sasaki. And luckily, she was okay and Iguchi would be getting better. But seeing them only made his willpower grow. He needs to eat all the fingers and then die. But he's he has other plans in mind. He doesn't just want to go along with this. Outside the hospital, he finds Gojo waiting for him when he comes out. The man waves to him as he makes his way over. He takes a seat beside him. I'm ready, but if I'm gonna do this, I'll have to get super strong. That's one way of thinking about it. You'll be okay. Just hold on tight. It's gonna be a wild ride for sure. Dim lights. Left alone in his office, Yaga, like usual, is working away at making puppets when he feels the presence of a student. How are you always late? You have a talent for annoying me, Satoru. That old guy's making cute stuff, thought Yuji. Oh, come on, I knew you'd be making dolls anyway. So, eight minutes isn't really so bad. So, that's the kid, huh? Yuji snapping out of his daze, then bows, introducing himself, and for some reason, saying that he likes girls like Jennifer Lawrence. Why are you here, then, Itadori? For the interview? No, I mean your goal. I was told you've been aware of your abilities at a young age. You're one of the lucky few. People like us are ostracized because we don't understand at first what we are. Others don't either, when they're not like us, but you managed it without a master or tutor or mentor. Oh, a goal. Well, all the fingers of Sukuna, if I'm someone who can help, then I will. It's also related to a promise. Hmm. So you choose to exercise and enter Jujutsu because someone told you? Disqualified. As he rises, he activates his cursed corpse. That's not a doll. It's a cursed course filled with my curse. Her name is Kathy, by the way. In that instant, the doll lunges forward, throwing a wallop of a punch, which is caught as the corpse is then instantly warped into a folder. And the activation is quite fun to see as Gojo analyzes and finds it very powerful. Instantly, however, all of Yaga's dolls, minuscule or big, begin to rise, heading for the boy, who asks why he's being so harsh. Conflict builds character. What do you think you're gonna do when you almost die? Will you blame the one that you promised for it? Is it their fault you're here? Or will it be your own choice? As he smacks his hands together, Yuji breathes in and his cursed energy explodes. It begins to flow like crazy as he rushes forward, striking and sending flying these puppets all around as they bounce and all return to him in a looping barrage, which Yuji blocks masterfully. They're doing this on purpose. Like, they're trying to just, like, get at him. They're, they're using this to their advantage. I don't know what I'm supposed to, like, have as a goal, okay? I'm just trying to do something with my life. But I'm not going to just die like some good doggo. He swings down, releasing a shockwave that as it passes through all the cursed puppets, they're instantly frozen in place. 
Though they are not saved, they cannot move either. By making prior contact and resonating his cursed energy, Yuji can also just freeze targets instead of just making them into folders to be processed. And Yaga is impressed. He passed. Satoru, show him to his room. Yuji's face will light up as Gojo is told to let him know of the regulations and such. Thank you, sir. Also, they'll be free in a few minutes, but I can't really control that because of a binding vow. Understandable. Welcome to Jujutsu Tech. With a nod, Yuji walks off and follows Gojo to his room. There, he would begin to put up his posters and quickly set his vibe around and such, and Gojo watches him. You know you don't have to do this. Hey, I'm real funny. I said I don't want to die, but I won't let people die because of me. Besides, the fingers are resonating. How do you know that? As Yuji stops and takes a seat on his bed, he mentions that his technique slowly gains information on objects he saved, and to truly understand something is to understand about the object, like he said before to Megumi. I don't know why it takes so long, maybe it's about a binding vow or something, but if you tell me more things about Sukuna, then I'll be able to track the other fingers much faster. Cool. What a bizarre body you have now. You're telling me. Luckily, I took off access to my body information. Even if he takes over... And he won't. He won't be able to use my technique at least. So there's... Oh, Fushiguro. Walking to the door, he asks why Yuji has to be put near him. I can hear you, you know. Nothing personal. I like my peace. And you're a sorcerer, huh? Touche. Don't be annoying. No problem. I got you. See, you'll get along. Nah, let's do some training, shall we? I'll punch him, thought Megumi. A while later, Megumi and Yuji walk onto the open field where Gojo says that today Yuji will be saving and copying Megumi Shikigami. You said you can give access, right? Oh, that's your goal, said Megumi. I mean, that could be very formidable. What do I need to do? Just explain your technique to me and it should be fine, says Yuji. And so Megumi does, so explaining how he even summons and tames Shikigami. And with that done, he summons by his side the white and black divine hounds. Yuji kneels down and pets them as he breathes in, his brain slowly saving the files until he hangs his head forward unresponsive, and while he's doing this, the dogs are frozen. I is he okay? asks Megumi. Just give him a moment. As he jolts up, Yuji literally jumps back into the air and lands, shaking his head. Oof, sorry. I never saved part of a technique before. It's a rush. Alright, I got it. I wonder what we should name it. It's not going to be the same as yours. As he copies the hand sign of Gyokuken, Megumi says, maybe Wolf Pack? I like it, but maybe I'll go with Wolf Gang? As Yuji's cursed energy begins to warble from him, or more specifically from his arms, they are then marked and lined with fangs of black and white individually. He readies into a stance and strikes down with both arms, instantly caving it 10 feet deep. Whoa! Yuji, obviously caught off guard, still manages to, like, you know, take control of the situation because. That was a bit weird for him, like it's the first time he's done this, but the information in his brain just is automatically accessed. And he's just impressed how he did himself. And Gojo then looked down into this deep hole. And you don't feel tired at all? How, how did he do that? These marks. It's like the ground was eaten, says Megumi. Well, it's his interpretation of the technique. After all, no one can use the same technique the exact same way as, well, you. Except for Yuta. Also... Think of my reserves like the storage of computers, says Yuji. The more space I take up, the more cursed energy I expand, but the more I put a binding vow on myself to, well, fix that. I created two extra reserves of it. Each make about five, so I was able to make 15 with all three of them. I wonder if that makes sense. You can copy a reserve of your own cursed energy, asked Megami. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. Sometimes I honestly wonder what the hell I have in my hands. Yes, but you said you're much like a computer in a way. You can't normally duplicate cursed energy, not unless you're using reverse curse technique, but it's likely that you're actually replicating your own brain, says Gojo. As this leads her to shock, Yuji holds his head in shock. The wolves fracture to nothing and the child says, Dude, what the hell? Agreed, Megumi said. Alright, we'll go to the next day. The bustling area of Morioka Station is where we find the two students next, with Yuji finally having gotten his uniform. But while they wait, Yuji realized how much like his technique considered his body to actually be like a CPU. It has a self-conscious glitch 
which is kind of cool. A virus input by my own innate technique that benefits me. Yeah, that is one crazy Val. He thinks to himself, just that making me ask him what's wrong. Ah, nothing. Just thinking about some things. So, a newbie, huh? She's been living on the countryside, so at least you guys have that in common. Alright, nice to meet you. Cookie sucking no bar. Happy to be here. You're lucky I'm the one drawing your team. Yeah, not exactly ecstatic, said Yuji. You and that Asian guy have beef or something? Depends. You wanted to die on that question? Th the fuck? Thought so. Also, aren't you going to introduce yourselves? Alright, Itadori Yuji from Sendai. Shigeru Megumi. Already judging them, Kugisaki uses her powers of observation to bring to conclusion that these two are annoying. <sighs> yeah, why do I always end up in these situations? Anyway, what are we doing here? Asked Megumi. As Gojo shows a grin, a veil of cursed energy covers the scene, transitioning us to them staring at a haunted building. Oh, why did I believe you, shouts Kugisaki. Ah, well, we'll just get it over with quick. That's some fun, says Ichizori. Right, Fushiguro? You'll be going without me for this one, honestly. Hope you don't mind. Oh, really? Alright. You ready? As he looks back for Kugisaki, however, she's gone already, telling him to hurry up as she had just slammed the doors of the building shut. Quickly running after her, Yuji catches up and they take the stairs together until they reach the first floor and split up. But as soon as Yuji goes off alone, however, he is attacked from above when his enemy is then frozen and trapped in a folder. Using his insane reflexes, Yuji can ready himself to trap an enemy when they touch him, but he must be able to track it. Darting back, he then leaps forward with the front flip as he releases the confused curse which is then bashed in the head and crashes to the floor being exercised. Hmm. I'm hoping better than usual. It's probably that Sukuna guy, huh? As he moves on, we enter Sukuna's in a domain. There we find him mumbling over his plan uh, plans and stuff to use Yuji, as his technique is quite interesting. An application of his technique while he's vulnerable. He must be able to access the information on his surroundings much more. It wasn't just me. And indeed, Yuji is mistaking his power. When his CPU gets updated, he doesn't realize it and gains skills he never thought he could produce. It slowly settles in, and then one day he's like, oh yeah, I know this already. One thing he's just accessed, however, is currently in full control of his body. He's doing it like flawlessly, and you've noticed that he obviously has better control of cursed energy. Because like, obviously people are fast as hell in JJK, but the way that that curse moved like to stab him in the head for his first mission, right? That was pretty fast, mostly because it caught him off guard. He didn't even blink when he froze that one and just kicked it. That all happened in the fraction of like a second. I'm not even joking. So his cursed energy, reflexes, and all of that are insane right now. Like multiplied. But, again, he's not going to know for a while. He's just going to be getting it all subconsciously. And then he'll learn about it more and more. And I'll explain his powers eventually. So don't get mad at me. However, he has a mission. So let's continue that. During it, he feels something wrong and runs until he reaches a wall. And behind that wall, he knew what his true objective was. It was right there. He could even feel the presence of Kugisaki there and thus kicks forward, busting through the wall like nothing much to the shock of Kugisaki and the curse and the kid that is hostage. It goes to stab the child, but instantly finds itself frozen as Yuji had just grabbed the kid's arm. Ever heard of an indirect kiss? My technique kind of works that way. Physical contact through transference. As he pulls back the kid, he releases and bashes the creature's head in, and it lights the blaze, dying. Whew. You good, kid? Nodding, he says yes, and Yuji says that they should hurry up and, you know, get out of here, obviously. Did you just... You know what? Never mind. Thanks, says Kugisaki. Oh, huh, that's the only nice thing you've said so far. Hey! <laughs> The two boys then look at her, wondering what was this person's deal, as she kept giggling away and just exits. Hey, wait up! He follows her out, giving a silver lining to everything that's happened today. They have fun in the end, they ate together, 
But tomorrow, the hell began. With the new student having so much potential, Satoru himself was motivated and decided to have everyone work separately on special finishing moves. He himself helps Kugisaki since aside from Megumi and Yuji, she is the weakest and needs to catch up. But we're not going to get to see all of that. Detention Center. Kugisaki, Yuji, and Fushiguro listen as Ichiji tells them about the possibility of a special gray showing itself. Please trust your instincts and run if you feel even something is slightly off. Got it. But should we really be doing this? Asked Yuji. Kugisaki concurs and asks where their sensei is, but Ichiji says that he's busy. They then start to head in when a voice is heard. They look back and see a woman, here for her son. And it's honestly heart-wrenching, but it also motivates them. So while Ichiji holds her off with the other managers and comes up with an excuse, the students would then head in. A veil is put up after, and inside is a whole new world. This is a two-story building, right? Asks Yuji. Fushiguro is the first to realize what's going on and looks back saying that their way out has disappeared. Looking back, Kukisaki freaks out. Oh, we can just use your dogs. They literally smell curses. Duh, said Yuji. As he summons them, Fushiguro says he was about to say the same thing, which really is Kugisaki. At least now they have some hope. But that hope is shattered when they find the corpses of the ones held here. This is sick. Disgusting, said Kugisaki. It's playing around. It was playing with them, Yuji said. Alright then. He stands saying they should get out, and the others definitely agree, when suddenly Kugisaki falls right before them. They were so stunned they could only call her name out as if waiting for her to come back. And in that instant, beside the two, horror shows itself. They notice it. The special grade has arrived, and its very presence leaves them shivering. By gathering all his courage, Yuji swings for it, only to have his hand be severed. Huh? The curse giggles to itself as the two jump back, and just then, Fushiguro notices that his white wolf was stuffed in a wall elsewhere. Hey, Itadori, we need to get out of here right now. Yeah, you're right. Go on ahead. I'll hold it off. He looks at him like he's crazy because his arm is still leaking and gushing blood, but Yuji, in this moment of stress, says he's able to sort of cauterize the wound using his cursed energy and clog it. When you're ready to run, I just need to activate my technique and he'll freeze. But we'll need to touch him again. Well, homie, you'll be pummeling the hell out of me, so I'll have plenty of chances. Come on, trust me. I don't have a death wish. I'll meet up with you. Fisher Girl is still terrified, however, as he struggles to make a decision, but he definitely doesn't have a choice. He runs, and in the same instance, the curse fires a blast of cursed energy, which is met by Yuji's palm. He freezes before being converged onto one point into a folder. And then, while he darts forward and punches, he's then weaved and uppercutted. He feels his jaw creak and he spits blood, but he made contact and thus the curse freezes. Activation of this technique keeps those saved for a minimum of 12 seconds. However, those with grace, um, the greatest cursed energy control can reduce this to exactly 6 seconds or 3. Those are the only two other options. Luckily, the curse has no technique, so it innately has no finesse with cursed energy. This gives Yuji time to land and bludgeon him with the haymaker, which sends him crashing into a wall. And as he falls frozen, Yuji steps back, but begins to walk forward. What are you doing, brat? Sukuna's mouth appears on his face as Yuji says that it's none of his business. Oh, you think you can stay on and just hold on so your friends can escape? How heroic. It's not about heroism, you bastard. I'm just a jujutsu sorcerer. It doesn't mean I- As he's cut off by an explosion of cursed energy, he fires forward and hopes to stop it as he stands his ground with his bare hands. He feels his skin peel and burn off while he screams. Through this intense pain, he thinks not of his grandfather's last words, but of his friends, and now seeing them dead will be far more painful. And that's when the process catches up. As Sukuna retreats into his innate domain, he sits onto his throne and smiles. <laughs> wow, not bad. What was originally only his innate domain is slowly being chipped away at while Yuji's begins to form. Flashback. Yuji, if I'm being honest, your father was a sad man. Uh, the means he went through to 
Make sure you be brought into this world. What what did he do? Your mother, says Wasuke. She wasn't ordinary, just like you, but unlike you. It shouldn't be possible for her to have even given birth to you. Okay, you're really freaking me out, Grandpa. What do you... As his memory replays in his head, it suddenly cuts as memories begin to flood his brain. What he is, what he will become, but not how he was conceived. And he comes to know all of it in an instant. As the curse laughed and giggled, it came to a stop as it saw steam bubbling off of Yuji's skin as it regenerates until he even begins to regain his hand. <sighs> I swear, it's always on delay. As he fixes his posture and regains focus, besides Yuji, appear two copies of himself, much of the curse's confusion. It fires another explosion and the three Yujis run forward as the clones hold their hands forward, quite literally catching and grasping while keeping the field at bay, while the real Yuji tackles through the weak point at its front and infuses every part of his being with cursed energy. His speed increases tenfold as he appears right before the finger bearer and rains down a storm of fists into its body. Each hit accumulates and builds up the freezing time which locks it in place and dissipates its attack. This freezes, uh, this frees up the clones to run forward and then kick its ribs right in as it spews blood. Thank you. As he readies his fists and held it tightly, would you prepare for the final blow saying that though not intentionally, the curse had quickened the process of his understanding of himself and now he knows his full capabilities. He knows how to even like up the process himself by going into battle. So now I know this punch will end you. He heaves and strikes the curse as the force of his fist impacts like a shotgun and causes a spark of black and red to envelop and take off its head. Yeah, save th that. The sparks of black are taken into the archive as his clones fade and he falls to a knee. He feels his cursed energy sap and so he uses one of his stored reserves because that took a lot and it's the first time he's ever made copies of himself that each uses technique to stop the wave. I did good. Yeah. The innate domain slowly shaves away at itself while he's trying to catch his breath and far away Fushikuro feels it while he runs. It's gone. I, I don't know how. I don't sense Sukuna. No, let me get Cookie Saki out of here first. Itadori Yuji, Vessel of Sukuna, single-handedly beats Special Great Curse and learn Reverse Curse Technique. No further casualties. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering if I'm going to make the whole like, accumulation of like freezing time like fair and like balanced, there's a binding valve that automatically stops that from like accumulating past like a minute. He can only go like below 30 at most. And the person who he's trying to like freeze can constantly keep cycling the cursed energy to break that cycle. And he also can only like do, I'll explain it the rest of it later. Like I said, in the next part, I'll explain it. But yeah, it's not that OP. It's still OP, but like it has limits. A day later in Shoko's office, she checks the body of Yuji, his healed hands and fingers, everything. A perfect usage of reverse cursed energy, if I say so myself. How would you figure it out? Don't know. It was like, bam, and whoosh, and I feel with power, you know? Yeah, I don't understand, but it's different for everybody. You're good. Good job, Itadori. Thanks. Moments later, he exits while he fixes up his hoodie when he's then abruptly hugged by his friends. Oh, hugs. Hugs are nice. I'm not going anywhere, you know. You should have ran, Sekugi Saki. Yeah, and let you guys die. Never gonna happen. As they break their hugs, she kicks him in the leg. Ow! Good. Good. Pain means you're alive. Yuji says she's being a bit harsh before then looking at Fushiguro for some help. But Fushiguro himself, he looks full of guilt. And Yuji is reminded of his grandfather. And what he now knows, well, he knows what he is now. I told you to run. It's fine. Next time. Next time I won't go anywhere. End of part one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what I can do to make it more fun. Even though I already made like all the parts ahead of time. I could just add in some extra stuff. Make sure to leave some suggestions. And anything you might have left in, I might have already done. So it'll be twice the fun because I know we're on the same page. But, you know, like and subscribe. All that shit. And uh, appreciate y'all, man. For real. 
Stay safe out there. Peace. I'm gone. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath. My past is filled with things I won't forget.